storm show. Hey, it's a storm show. So Wendy Williams went on Sway's Universe this week and she pretended to spill out all of her business, all of the tea that we wanted to know. But I see right through all of the charades. See, one thing you got to keep in mind about Wendy is that she's a veteran in this game. When you are the queen at getting people's business, you know how to protect your own business. Unless, of course, social media is involved because a lot of y'all social media people should have been FBI agents because y'all find more dirt than what the FBI do. So anyway, Wendy was on the show. She talked about a lot of things, but let me just summarize it interview for you. Wendy stated that she was ready to divorce Kevin, but he's refusing to sign the paperwork. She was excited to be moving and to have her new apartment and to get rid of that house. She ain't changing no diapers. She said the show ain't going nowhere and she is not moving to LA. But here's the thing, Wendy, when you build a career on lies, it's hard for us to believe anything you say. Number one, you've been saying that you was drug free for the last 20 years, yet we steady see your nose collapsing more and more by the year. So which is it, Wendy? Is it that white rabbit? Is it that booger sugar? Is it that white girl? Is it that smack, allegedly? Or are you getting a Michael Jackson, Braxton family, Kimmy Chop Suey type nose going on? Which one is it? It's one or the other. Not to mention you got that constant nasal drip and that constant cold that just never goes away because your nasal passages are completely eroded out. You know, whenever you hear somebody talk and every single time you hear them speak, they sniffing, snorting. It's either one of three things. Either they a smoker, they didn't have a bad nose job or they do boo sugar sugar you let me know which one you think you think she's up to then you said that, that you're super excited to date i don't think that you're like really excited to date i just think you're excited to get that back blown out i think you're excited to do things that you were never able to do before because your man had nothing left for you okay he was only he was only giving you a tic tac then all of his love and all of his energy he was giving over to your sister wife okay so and yes that is wendy's sister wife because ladies let me tell you something if your man go inside you and go inside another woman and come back to you you will swap fluids and energies with her and you by spiritual connection or sister wives whether you know it or not so that situation was going on i just think that wendy has not truly been able to live and be with it in the world for the last 20 25 years kevin has handled everything he didn't even let the girl have a phone he didn't even let the he didn't even let the girl send an email you know now that i think about it kevin is more of a r kelly-ish tommy matola heavy lip Vincent Herbert type of dude. Like that whole situation is actually creepy now that I think about it. I mean, for goodness sakes, Wendy, you lived in a bedroom that was painted black, blind shut, and was soundproof. Sounds like we almost need like a surviving Kevin Hunter or a surviving Wendy Williams show. I don't know, y'all have to ask Charlemagne the rapist to God for that information. Let's talk about the fact that your husband had a whole baby on you and you didn't tell us until, you know, it was broken by us here on YouTube, you know, my mentor that broke the whole thing that you know set the internet on fire then let's talk about the fact that over the last year and a half when we already knew that your marriage was on the downturn with kevin hunter you told us everything was good everything is good in hunterville there's absolutely no problems and then a year later your sister wife has your stepchild your your, your husband is being accused of all kinds of things out here in the world eating skid marks and the like and it was just too much so overall wendy you have continued put out these lies about your own life to where now anytime you speak i don't believe anything you say you know there's some truth to it but not quite any and quite frankly i do think it's time for your show to end and this is why wendy you are not the same wendy that we knew 10 years ago 11 years ago when the show started you can't remember your line you don't remember your interviews all of the information that you speak is being fed to you by norman poor norman norman always got a job to do he got to do his job and her job too so for me just me watching as a viewer she's not with it and not there anymore but that's what i gotta say on wendy you can take it how you want to she can do a thousand damn interviews i don't give a damn that she's doing that movie with lifetime i don't believe anything she has to say moving right along let's talk about michael lawrence tyler aka mystical aka danger aka get on the flow <laughs> He 
was on the flow. So he was performing in Tampa this past, you know, he is out of prison. I don't really know any new music that he has going on. He's been in jail for the last 10, 15 years. I'm not really sure what songs he was performing, maybe his old hits, but he attempted to jump from one stage to another and failed miserably and here's the thing you know i'm not one to, to laugh at someone falling but this shit was fun and this is why mystical you knew damn well you weren't able to leap from one stage to the other you know different than freaking miguel that had tried to do that leap oh yeah miguel we ain't forgot when you tried to do that leap across the stage and you put your crotch dead on that girl's neck and had to pay her. that's another video for another day i don't forget nothing over here on my damn channel but mystical your body is not even you don't even look like you built to be hopping from stage to stage you look like you built to keep the Negroes off their booty and to eat oodles and noodles and lift weights. That's what you've been doing the past 10 years. That body is built for boxing, you know, protecting your badussi, eating oodles and noodles and lifting weights. That's exactly what your body's built for. Not to be leaping across the stage, leading for the flexible dudes, not the dudes that's been pumping iron for the last 10, 15 years. <laughs> but in reality though mystical has some really dope music back in the day so hopefully get together like an old school tour or or a hookup with an up-and-coming rapper or i just i just hope he can make a comeback because i feel like him and dmx their careers ended way too soon but it was a lot of existential factors that play that came into play of course moving right along we're gonna talk about quavo from the migos now you know it doesn't matter how many videos i see from the migos or how many interviews i watch i still cannot tell one me go from the other one you know y'all can let me know down below which one is quavo it's either beyonce the michelle or the kelly of the group i need to know but that ain't important what's important is the fact that quavo was coming out with an animated series and it's going to document the hip-hop scene in atlanta it's going to be centered towards kids and basically give kids of color something they can look forward to watching every week and i am here for it because kids of color my damn dog about to jump off the balcony get back because because kids of color need something that they can watch and look and aspire to be as well you know you need no matter where you come from in this life you need to know that your story is told and that it's valid because it is i mean these people all these musical artists that come out of atlanta they they had a start from somewhere and it was a hip-hop scene when they were coming up so back when i was coming up we had proud family we had static shock and we had green lantern but i don't know what these kids got now so i'm here for a black man growing and and spreading his wings into other things because that whole trap music era is probably on its way out and when that gets old you are gonna have to find a way to make your money Okay, moving right along, we're gonna talk about Centoya Brown. Do y'all remember her? She was the traffic teen who had made headlines because she was trying to get out and trying to basically start her life over. Some people were here for her getting out, said, hey, she's paid her debt to society, let her move on with her life. A lot of y'all wanted to keep her locked up because you felt like she didn't have to do that. She didn't have to kill the old boy. She wasn't in any immediate danger, but it would take a whole hour long video to break down trafficking and the effects, the effects it has on you mentally and how something can happen to you today and then you snap three weeks later because you're triggered by a past trauma or event, you know, PTSD. What I came to say was Centoya is really killing the game. Now she didn't just got released from prison. We didn't find out who her husband was. By the way, she was in prison for the last 15 years and got married. She didn't got a degree while she was in prison. She plans on using that degree to be an advocate for other traffic girls. And, and she got a book coming out. So it's like, wait a minute. I got to really get my damn life together. It's like, I, I'm trying to grow subscribers. I can't get a date. I, just, I, I can't manage to get the car clean. But she's been in prison the last 15 years and hooked a spouse, a book deal, a degree... <laughs> And it's really probably gonna make a lot of paper. I say all that to say your circumstance is simply that a circumstance is where you are today but don't let that prevent you getting to where you want to get tomorrow this girl has been locked up and has accomplished a lot a lot none of us really have any excuse on why we're not achieving our goals and working hard and really giving every day 110 percent, which is what we should be doing but i really hope that this marriage between her and uh, this dude last centoya if you want to come to the camera what you need to do to keep your money coming in is make sure you get a movie deal with lifetime okay make sure that they pay you very well to use your story on top of that you need to hook up with we tv or some other kind of network so you can connect your story documentary and you can hook that in with love after lockup centoria take my advice to use what you got 
to get what you want, okay? But in a positive way, not in a negative way. On to our next story. Now let's move on to our reality recap. So in our reality recap this week, I wanna talk about a few shows. The Real Life of Black China, Black Ink Crew Chicago, and the new upcoming show, Black Ink Crew Compton. See, here's the thing. I was watching the Black China show and this girl named Dencia was talking to Black China. Now Dencia is the owner of that skin whitening cream called White Initius. She was really big like back in 08, 09, but we didn't pretty much forgot about her by now. And the main part that pissed me off about this scene was how Dencia was treating her staff and how she was referring to people that didn't live in the same zip code as her. And I just want to say, Dencia, you know, you might think it's cool to put down staff and people that, you know, do hair and, and, and have to bartend and wait and all that kind of stuff, wait tables and all that. But here's, see, a trick that don't even love her own melanin in her skin could never talk about anybody else. You know, they may be a, a server, they may be a bartender or a hairstylist, but you know what they're not doing? Stripping themselves of their melanin to be something that they would never live up to, Dencia. See, a trick that don't love herself can't roast nobody. You've already failed. You hate your life and you hate your existence. So I would rather be poor and be a working class person than to hate what I see when I look in the mirror every single day. Didn't see it. See, your problem is that you was way prettier as a dark-skinned black girl, but now is this your, this version of a light-skinned black girl that you is now, you look a mess. Your plastic surgeon failed you, your skin looks permanently ashy, and you better hope you don't have skin cancer coming around the corner. Because when y'all skin starts getting ate up from all these chemicals you've been putting on it all these years, I don't want to hear you crying, I don't want to see Nan documentary from you. Ship your ass back to Africa and deal with you got deal with the consequences over there. Dency. Let's talk about that Dency. Let's talk about this arrogance that you have for no particular reason. Because see, yes, you may be African. Yes, you may know your roots and, and know where you come from. But what you fail to realize is, well, hell, even over there in your own homeland, you don't even own your homeland. The Europeans and Asians own your homeland. You can't even go and get a loan from your African people. Every time you go into African bank, it's actually a bank that's backed up by friends. How many of y'all knew that? How many of y'all knew that 14 countries in the eastern part of Africa actually pays 85% of everything they make to a big ass bank in France. That's why they would never let Africa unite into one big country because then Europe would fall and Asia then got them, then, then, then learn from the Europeans and they then came over and they're enslaving the Africans by tricking them into these billion and trillion dollar contracts to build railroads that ain't going no damn where and to build infrastructure that would never be completed to put them in a perpetual state of slavitude servitude and slavery you know not just enslaving you but your kids and your kids kids and your kids kids and then whatever eternity you believe in too but y'all didn't all fail for it you come from a homeland where you are impoverished by your own damn people that look just like you because a lot of the leaders are greedy as hell but you think you can read and roast people who do hair and serve and people that serve you absolutely can't believe it and i don't really want to call you a bitch but i call it as I see it, if it look like a duck, quack like a duck, act like a duck, bitch like a bitch, it's a bitch. That's what you are. That's what you will always be because you simply don't love yourself. You are the poster child for self-hate. Don't you ever come for a person that have to work for what they get in life because everybody's not comfortable with stripping their melanin, selling their soul, and selling their cookie box to get in a zip code. Black China, you also better realize that Dencia is not your damn friend. You see how quick, quickly and comfortable she was talking about poor people, but you are a poor person, Black China. That's exactly where you come from. So if you lose all your money tomorrow, China, she ain't your damn friend no more. We gonna move right along and talk about the Black King Crew Chicago season finale. Look, do y'all believe Van and Charmaine had oral sex because it looks like that's what it really was i wasn't believing it at first because i didn't really think that van was charmaine's type until i remembered that in season one don actually hit that cookie box in the bathroom at a tattoo shop and if you're willing to spread your legs in a bathroom in a nasty ass tattoo shop then you really have no standards at all i mean charmaine is also the same girl that squatted and peed on a rug down in jamaica just to mark her territory so she could keep a room so yeah she really doesn't have any standards but what i really wanted to say is that even if Vanna Charmaine did do something. Those producers are shady as hell over there. They're shady as hell. Like they gonna make sure no matter what that they make good TV because here's my thing. That's something that never had to surface. Y'all didn't have to let Evanita come back. You didn't have to spill that tea right as Charmaine was getting engaged. Like y'all better learn. Get off these reality shows. 
because otherwise you ain't gonna have no damn wife in no relationship. But all in all, Ryan decides to shut down the tattoo shop once again. I, I don't believe none of this. This tattoo shop has been open and closed more than McDonald's ice cream machine. Like what the hell? Is it open, isn't closed? You know, I think in real life, none of them actually work at that tattoo shop. I think that that's just a big building. The nine Mac that we see on Ryan Henry's Instagram Live is the actual shop, and the other one is just the set for the show. Then let's talk about Black and Crew Compton that's coming on. It looks like it's going to be pretty good. My only thing was, Kyla, is that you? Like when I looked at the promo for it, the head person of the tattoo shop got two babies with Kyla Pratt and I have been wondering all these years what happened to you and and now we see I mean, you've been chilling in Compton living your life and let me just say this I think Kyla is one of the most underrated stars of the early 2000s because that show one-on-one -on -one was the bomb like one-on-one -on -one, half and half all of us those shows were so dope and it's just funny to me how black actresses in the game will be used to build networks aka upn aka fox and then as soon as the network is built up they kick them to the curb and you know we're never to see them again so kyla i hope you can kind of parlay this show into some more acting gigs i've seen you in a few bet movies but you're definitely way more talented than what the industry gives you credit for and no matter what you do you could pop out 10 30 kids you will always look 15 to me. That's just my opinion. Lastly, I did want to let you guys know that I did an interview for my boy, Ronnie Dijon. If y'all don't remember, we did a live together. I want to say back in July or the very end of June, it was right before I was headed to Atlanta. You guys that saw that live enjoyed it. I ended up interviewing him for his new album that he has coming out. And I want you guys to go and check out his album. When it's released, I will share it and leave a link for you guys. Let me know what you think about his music here's the thing i'm expanding into interviewing up and coming musical artists so if you are an artist in the atlanta area apart or you're gonna be flying to atlanta hit me up you can send me a, a email a dm it doesn't matter for my rate i will interview you put you up on my platform discuss your music discuss your interview and just create a community together and i will say it was a lot of fun interviewing him he is actually going to be coming to atlanta in november so when he does we'll get him a proper interview and we'll also discuss his projects and we'll do a live because y'all just love ronnie like ronnie is super funny now before i go i gotta tell you guys about my sponsors i am affiliated with smile love now smile love provides a really affordable alternative to those nasty traditional metal braces that be cutting up your lip and cutting up your gums if you want to improve your smile today follow my link down below and use my discount code storm550 which will give you 550 dollars off your clear aligners so that you can straighten your teeth and still live your life i also want to shout out my second sponsor regina's hair salon down in houston texas she works with all hair types and she has started a yearly hair care program for only a hundred bucks okay and that's going to help to maintain and grow your hair she also has created a mink oil which helps if your hair is shedding you know if you've lost your edges and you're trying to grow your hair and grow it healthy and all of her information is in my description box down below love you guys so much thank you for tuning in we will go in deeper on our damn after show and i will catch you guys later uh, it's storm show it's a storm show.